Want to eat together, he said, pointing towards an empty table. I get lonely for conversation when I'm driving. Madeline's eyes crinkled. That would be a great pickup line, except she probably reminded him of his mother. You remind me of my mother, he said. My name's Jimmy. I'm Madeline, and yes, I'd be happy for the company. Why are you driving by yourself so late? Jimmy asked after they'd settled at the table and unpackaged their food. He took off his cap and set it on the edge of the table, then ran his fingers through salt and pepper curls that were several weeks past the need for a haircut. Madeline read the logo on his cap, Summer Transport, letters in green with a bright yellow sun. She set her container of fries between the two of them, indicating he should help himself, then shrugged off her coat, letting it drape over the back of the plastic chair. Last minute change of plan, said Madeline. I was heading to New York to see my friend Gloria. She picked up her coffee cup and took off the lid to let it cool. I had been visiting my daughter in Vermont and it was a three hour drive or so from her house to Cooperstown. That's where my friend lives. Anyway, Gloria called me when I was about an hour out and told me she'd come down with a stomach virus. I'd better not come. She was sure it was norovirus, as there was a lot of it in the school where she volunteers. Jimmy nodded, his mouth full of meatball sandwich. I had a choice of going back to my daughter's or driving home. I thought it would be easier to go home. It's all highway driving. I would have to drive back roads to my daughter's house, not to mention that she and her husband have had to put up with me for the last five days, and they both work. Home's a little bit farther, but I thought I could do it. She stopped to take a sip of coffee. Only it's been a long time since I've driven so far by myself. Jimmy wiped his mouth, carefully removing tomato sauce from his beard. I'm surprised your daughter didn't give you more grief. I wouldn't have let my mother drive so far alone. He squeezed a package of ketchup onto the edge of the sandwich wrapper and took a French fry. Oh, she gave me grief, made me share my location. Madeline made air quotes with her fingers. I suppose you know all about it, but she had to walk me through setting it up on my phone. Now she's tracking my every move. Madeline laughed and started eating her Big Mac, savoring the greasy, salty, sweet flavor. Tell me about your mother. Not much to say. She passed away about two years ago, cancer. I miss her though. Jimmy took another French fry and dipped it in the ketchup, stuffing the whole fry into his mouth. So she didn't do much driving? Oh no, she drove a lot, but she and my dad drove together. They got an RV after they retired and took off to see the country. They had those senior passes for the national parks, Yellowstone, Zion. I think they were trying to see them all. I don't know how many they got to, maybe 30 or something like that, before my mother got too sick to travel, but they had a good time. I owned my own rig, so I'd meet up with them sometimes when I was headed cross country and we'd spend a couple of days together. My husband and I talked about doing that. It sounded like a lot of fun. We were gonna rent an RV and see how we liked it, but we never got around to it. Your husband died? Yes, not quite a year ago. He had a heart attack. What about your father? Is he still living? She saw his face change, a creasing of the forehead, a pinched look around the eyes, signs of stress. Yes, he's still alive. He's in a memory care facility. He went downhill fast after my mother passed. Oh, I am so sorry. My husband had Alzheimer's too. Jimmy looked at her, her his eyes focusing directly on hers, nodding. So you know what it's like. I'm on the road. There's no way I can take care of him as I'd like. And the place he's in, well, it's okay. It's the best he can afford. I pay some too, but it's bleak. Imagine living with a whole bunch of demented people. I stop by and see him whenever I get back home, but he doesn't recognize me anymore, Jimmy continued, sitting back and swirling the remaining ice cubes in his coffee. The staff there seem to take good care of him but he's always trying to escape. They called me last week. He climbed out his window. His room's on the second floor. 
slid down the porch roof into the bushes so he didn't hurt himself. Luckily, all the memory care rooms look out on an enclosed courtyard so he couldn't get lost. People who work there, they have to be saints. He's lucky, I guess. But I know he really wants to be on the road. I guess it runs in the family. Was he a truck driver too? Lineman for the electric company. Always said he had the best job in the world. He could be his own boss when he was out in his truck. Jimmy crumpled up the wrappings from his meal and took a last slurp of his coffee. He stood up, holding out his hand for Madeline's trash. She handed him the box, but held on to her coffee. I'll keep this for the road, she said. Thank you.